Hello and welcome back to part two in our two-parter episode covering how to do level traveling. In the last part we set up our transition actors, allowing us to put in a player start tag to dictate which player start we begin at in our next level. In this episode we're going to add some flashy effects to this such as animations, camera cuts and so forth to overall improve the experience. So let's just jump straight in. Okay, so to get the transition to looking a lot nicer, uh, we're going to use animations and fades for the camera. Let's start with the camera fade. So on the game mode here, when it begins the game, in play, uh, we're going to do a camera fade into the map. So get player camera manager and start camera fade. This node here will take a from alpha to do alpha. So I want it to go from one to zero, leave the color black. Okay. And I'm going to set the duration here to, let's say, uh, one second. Okay. So it'll take one second to go from all black to no black. And for that, hit compile and save. Cool. Next, we're going to go to our transition and set up stuff that's happening here so what i want it to do i want it to animate and move the character uh, and change the camera view on the viewport here we're going to add a camera to this transition camera and you can leave it wherever you want it doesn't really matter because each each transition is going to have our own custom camera position uh, but let's see default one here just turned around looking at Boom here. Okay. okay, nothing special, just doing this. So the next thing is we want our character to automatically walk through the option through the door. So you're not pushing the key, they're going through it, they're going through on their own. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a scene component to this. And this scene component, make sure it's not attached to anything separate from here. And this scene component uh, will leave and call it a destination. And what we're going to do is go to the event graph and I'm just going to disconnect the open level for now and move that to the side. And after the cast of third person, I'm going to get the player controller and unprocess its current target, which is the player character. So I'm going to take control away from the player controller. We then want to take the, as third person character, it to spawn the default controller and get possessed by it. That's what this does. This will spawn the AI controller and possess it straight away. Um, for that, then we can tell it to move to user AI number two. That will go in there. Um, the pawn should be not what context, but pawn should be going into a third person character. So the destination is going to be the destination point, the scene component here. Uh, we're going to get the location of it. So get location, you want to get world location. And then you want to get a random point in navigable radius. This ensures that it will find a point that the AI can actually reach and navigate to. Plug that into destination, set the radius here to 50. Okay, so once we've done that, that will make it move towards that spot, uh, that point. Uh, we're then going to tell it to change the camera view. So we're going to get player controller and we're going to set view target blend. Plug that into the target. And the new view target is going to be itself. I'm going to change the blend time here to one second. And after that, we're going to do a camera fade. So same way we did it before, we can get player camera manager. And we're going to start camera fade. This time it's going to go from 0 to 1 in the alpha. 
the duration is still going to be one second. And when it's finished, you want to tell it to hold when finished. That means once it goes black, it'll stay black. Now, what you have to do here in order to tell it to wait for this to finish before it opens the level, you put a little delay in. So I'm going to delay this by 1.5 seconds. So half a second longer than when it's finished doing the, low, uh, the fade. Then that will go into open level. So to recap, what we're doing here is we're telling the player character to be unpossessed by the controller. And the character is going to spawn their AI controller and take possession of it. We then tell the AI to move to a location dedicated to this destination component. And then we're going to tell our camera to change to this camera over time and also fade out to black. Once it's finished doing that, I wait for one and a half seconds and then it will do open level. So the one thing we have to worry about here is that the player con controller will automatically try and manage what camera should be used at all times. So we have to change that. So we're going to create our own custom controller here. Create a new blueprint class, new player controller, and call this one custom player controller. And all we're going to do in here is we're going to tell it to not actively manage camera. So up here it says auto manage active camera. Turn that off. File. Then on the event graph here, on begin play, we're going to get controlled on and tell it to be possessed by the camera. Set a uh, view target. Blend. Target will be self because this is the controller. We'll leave that as is. And blend time will set to zero. So it just snaps to the player character at the start of the game. Save. We're going to tell our game mode to use our controller. Open up your game mode, go to the right hand side player controller class and choose custom controller. File and save. So with all that done, we're going to go into our level here and set up the camera position for all our things and also the destinations. So let's click on this one here and we'll click on the destination in the details panel and we're going to move that back there. Okay, special, just move it. And the camera, I'm going to leave it here for that that one there actually now let's turn that around let's click on the camera here and let's move it this way and see excellent okay now we'll go to the other ones Up here and destination that back here and click on the camera yep. and then I'm going to save this and go into those other levels those ones up here nation side and camera I'm gonna leave actually no I'll, I'll tilt the camera up a bit more camera will turn okay um whilst we're here what we will do be doing is adding a nav mesh for AI to be able to navigate to that destination point it needs a nav mesh on the volumes here, let's add a nav mesh bounds volume, and you want this to cover the level. So in here, I'm just going to change the size of my brush here to 2,000, 2,000 by 1,000, and hit P, and you can see what it looks like in the. We we'll make sure that the destination itself is inside the nav mesh. So you see, it's not inside the nav mesh here. Push, push that into it. Like May move the whole entire thing. Okay, as long as the destination is inside the nav mesh. Okay, 
save on that one and we're going to the other sub level. Again, we've got another nav mesh in here, so let's drag another nav mesh. And we're going to set that one to 1000 by 2000 by 2000. Chances are you've already got a nav mesh on your uh, map because you're using AI uh, for the enemies and things, but if you don't just add one in. You can even just add one in just for the transition area if you wish. But I assume that you're using. Okay, and by 3000. Okay, right, let's still got the camera for this one. And I'm going to click on the animation forwards, keeping it inside the nav mesh. And then click on the camera sound. Save, and then we go back to the lobby. My lobby screen here, just going to add the nav mesh to this. Set that. 10,000, 1,000, 5,000. P, see that. Okay, um, so for each one of these, make sure the destination again is still inside the nav mesh. That one's outside of it there. We're going to push that in. And over here. Oh. Okay. Destination. Okay, so let's test this out and see how we're looking. As you can see, the player controller has taken control of the pawn, and you saw that camera fade into the level there. So I'm just going to move this character over here, and let's go up to the top one here. And let's just go through and see how this works. And it's taken control away from me on the camera transition and put me into the new. What I want to do. Back again, take control off of me, transitioned level. This one out as well, make sure this one looks okay still. Good. Okay, so it's taking control away from me and moving the character for me. Now to improve this one last little bit, I think what I'm going to do is make the character also look like they've just walked in on the scene. I think that will make it look really nice and really tie this whole thing together. So let's go through that. So what I'm going to do is first of all create the animation that I need for this. And I'm going to use a root motion animation. So on my mannequin, I have this walk animation. I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to have, it's called intro walk. And on the intro walk, I'm going to add a root motion additive track to it. So what that means is I'm going to customize it to have a different animation. So on here, you're going to see the skeleton tree as well. Click on the root. And up top, you see the key button. Click this and add a track for the root. I then want to move the playhead along. The end. And then move the root ahead. Hit new key. And you should see a green line appear here on the additive track. Now you just want to test this out and make sure this looks okay. That it is moving at the right sort of speed and traveling the right amount of distance. I think that looks okay. Go back over to asset details. Oh, so you can hit apply at the end once you're happy with that. Then you want to go down to the details here and set enable root motion. Save. Close that. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to create an anim montage. Use anim montage. I need to edit my animation blueprint to use it. So I'm going to go to animation graph. Between these two, I'm going to add a slot to our animation. This allows the montages to go into here and take over the animation. And all I'm going to do is go to my first, my third person character. 
and on begin play of this character play I'm going to take the mesh and tell it to play and the montage to play intro walk file and save that okay so we're all done here now let's test this out Now you've got a nice intro walk as they walk into the scene. So it looks like the characters again over here. So, so yeah, short second. If you want it to last a little bit longer, you can do. I'll show you how to do that. And let's go to our animation again. Here, go to the montage. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the asset browser and put in another intro walk. You've got two of them. And I can just change this one to end a bit shorter here. So 0.5. So I've got one and a half times of the intro walk. That should give us a nicer. Obviously, if you want your character to do anything else animation wise, obviously, you don't have to do a walk. But when they come to a scene, there you go. There you go. Let's this one up. Perfect. And there you have it. That's the end of part two and our end of this mini two parter. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and saw some very useful stuff out of it. Let me know in the comments what part you feel like was the most useful for you. And if you want to support me, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you get access to all of my content early before anyone else. Massive thank you to all my patrons, YouTube members, and everyone else supporting me in this endeavor. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.